Hello one and all, my name is Rio and welcome back to another video. Uh, tomorrow I will be going to Nevermore Park as Chester FC play away at Geiserly. Uh, it's a trip up to York, so it'll be about an hour and a half, two hours to get there. So it's a match we're looking forward to now. It's been a week since we last played the game, so we'll be raring to go uh, yet again. But also we'll be hoping to improve a lot because the last two matches on the road we've lost quite convincingly. So... Tomorrow at Geisley we'll be hoping to put that right and improve it a bit more. So uh, this will be my fourth visit to Geisley, so uh, it's nothing new to me. So uh, my Geisley match preview will be coming up right now. Also please leave a like and subscribe to my channel. Hope you enjoy the video. Before I talk to you about Geisley, I will give you an update on the latest Chester FC news uh, from this past week. So we've had another home game postponed and it's not due to our stadium. Our stadium is looking really good now and it should be fine for next week. But uh, this week, uh, we, well, on October the 13th, we're scheduled to be playing Nuneaton Borough at home. And it's been called off this week because um, out of everything in the, everything you can think of, guess what? Uh, it's national call-up. So three Nuneaton players have been called up uh, for... Two of them have been called up for St. Kitts and Nevis. Uh, they're like... Um, and... Um, well, another player's been called up for Grenada, so the two countries in the Caribbean are taking part in the CONCACAF Nations Cup qualifiers. So uh, they're, playing in, they're playing one match in September, one match in October, one match in November. So the match in October clashes with our game against the Leeson at home, so it's been called off due to only three players being called up. So... They've had to uh no needs and they've had to uh call up, call off another two games. So in September they were playing York City at home. It's actually next Saturday, so uh, they should have been playing York next Saturday, but the first match for the the CONCACAF Cups next Saturday, so that's been called off. Our match in October, then in November, uh no needs and they're playing away at Alpherton Town, so that's been called off too, postponed. So it's a bit strange really, you know, from a Chester point of view, you can't really uh you know, raise your hand up and, you know, because of what's happened at our stadium. But it's a bit strange, really, because you can argue it's only three plays. It's not the end of the world, really. You've still got, a, uh, you know, a strong squad. So they have still got that depth in the squad, which, you know, but you can argue that what if those three players have been injured? They wouldn't call off a match then. But, yeah, it's very strange at uh, steps, at, you know, level six, National League North, that you hear of... Uh, matches being called off uh, due to international matches, but uh, you know, stranger things have happened. So, unfortunately, that's uh, our match has been called off for that date. Then, so, um, but on the good, on the on, on the positive side, uh, on the Friday night, so the day before the Nuneaton game should have been on there, uh, on the 12th of October, England under 17s playing against USA. It's a bit of a tournament, really. They're playing against a few other club, a uh, few other countries like Scotland and Wales, and uh, you know other countries. But uh, the match has been selected to be played at our stadium. So on the Friday, our stadium will still be uh, hosting the fixture. So England under the 17s uh, against the USA. So that should be a great occasion. It, I think it'll be on the TV too. We'll uh, receive a lot of profits as well, a lot of money. So. Uh, should be a really good crowd there, uh, you know, a few thousand expected to be at that fixture. So, should be a great occasion. I will be going to that one, uh, so I will do a vlog on that. But, you know, it's another two months ago yet. So, uh, yeah, so yeah, that's a good, that, that's the positive news. And um, in in regards to our stadium, it's in a good, uh, it's in a good condition now. It's uh, coping really well. Uh, I've had a few companies coming, you know, doing all the repair work, the, re the rewiring over the last two weeks, and they've been, um, you know, they've been at our groundwork until midnight, so they've been working, you know, nearly 24-7 every single day, so fair play to them, and hopefully our grounds will be ready for next Saturday uh, against Bradford Park Avenue, but if not, it will not be called off, because th there is an alternative venue in place, so uh, I think a Decision will be made early next week, probably Monday or Tuesday. So, uh, hopefully, it will be at our it will be at our stadium. But if not, then uh, it will be played at an alternative an alternative venue. So, uh, look out for that news shortly. So, yeah, that's it really. We should be signing a few new players uh, today, but uh, as of yet, we haven't signed anyone yet. Apparently, we're signing a new goalkeeper and a new striker. So, uh, right now, we haven't signed them, but hopefully, we can he, we will be able to you know we, we will sign them up uh ahead of tomorrow so that's the news really and yeah uh, yeah 
It takes about an hour and a half to get to Geisley from here. It's only um, in Yorkshire, it's in Leeds near Bradford, so it's not a long journey at all. And I've had the misfortune of being uh, going to Nevermore Park three times already, so it'll be my fourth visit tomorrow. And all three games ending in draw, so hopefully it'll be fourth time lucky and we can win tomorrow. But uh, yeah, it's a, it's a reasonable journey, it's not too long, and uh, it should be a good day out. But uh, yeah, they play at Nevermore Park, guys. It holds 4,000, so it's a small ground, it's nothing compared to Salford for last week. And uh, sorry, guys, Lee fans, but to be honest, it's one of the worst in this league. I've been there three times already, and uh, it's not the best of grounds. There are worse, like Bradford Park Avenue and Leamington, but it's certainly at the bottom of the league table for, you know, stadium wise. So, uh, it's a very, uh, it's, it's a small stadium. So, uh, the main stand, it's on the right hand side. Um, it's a bit strange, really. So, you've got one stand, it's all covered, most of it, it's all seated. Then, uh, you've got two stands. So, you've got one stand which is all seated, it's all covered, and you've got a floodlight uh, separating it from the other stand, which is. It's that same really, then opposite that is the clubhouse end, it's it's a bit similar really but it's just terracing so you've got uh, one stand which is covered to cover terrace, then you've got another floodlight in between in the dugouts and stuff, then the other stand is you know uh, near that, then uh, to either side it's just a flat standing terrace really, then behind one goal is the Oxley Road end, so that's just a flat standing terrace and Behind the other goal is the railway end, and it's the same really, just an identical um, stand to the Otley Road uh, end. So, yeah, it's a very small ground really, it's nothing too great about it. And uh, it will be segregated tomorrow, so we should be taking a decent following. I'd say not, you know, around the 300 mark, so it's not too bad really for the, uh, you know, for Yorkshire stuff. So, uh, we'll be taking 300 tomorrow, uh, it will be segregated. So. We will we will have one of the stands in the uh, main stand, so we'll have one of them. Then uh, we'll be behind the goal in the railway end. So uh, if we are to take a good following tomorrow, it's best to stand in the front, really, because uh, you can you know uh, your view can be a bit obstructed. So uh, yeah, I've been to Geisley three times already, so it's nothing new to me. I know what to expect. And uh, let's talk a bit about the actual team now. So they've had a decent start to the season. It's been a bit mixed. They, uh, they lost the first two games and they were in the relegation zone, but since then they're unbeaten in the last five. So uh, they have to move forward those matches, but they still they still got a good run going. So it, they'll be a tough nut to crack tomorrow. It'll be a tough game, and I'm gonna sit on the fence and go for a one-all draw because it will be a tough match. And uh, the manager it's actually Marcus Bignett, so you may remember Marcus from Chester last season. Uh, I have a lot of respect for the guy. I get on really well with him, you know. And he was treated unfairly, got sapped in, you know, unfairly uh, 24 hours after uh, our 3 2 win against Bromley. So I have a lot of respect for him, uh, other than uh, the other manager at Chester last season, uh, John McCarthy. So, uh, yeah, uh, be looking forward to seeing him tomorrow. And uh, they've got a few players, um, guys who played for Chester last season. They've got Andy Hawes, who was our uh, our left back, and Kings, uh, Kingsley James, who was, who was our midfielder. So, uh, they got two of them uh, plays from us last season, and also uh, John Worth not in goal for guys. So he played for us uh, between 2014-2016. He he's a nice guy too. Uh, he he did all right in goal for Chester, and I'm sure he'll get a wrong reception tomorrow. So they got a few uh, players who played for us last season. So uh, Marcus Bignett, he's the joint manager. Uh, guys, so they got two managers and one assistant. So they got Marcus Bignett and Russ O'Neill. Is their manager, then Paul Clayson's their assistant. So uh, they've got a strong managerial team there, and I'm sure they'll have a solid season. So, they, yeah, they won't beat them five. It'll be a tough game tomorrow, and it won't be the best to get a reaction out of. But from our point of view, we should be looking at this game to get a win out of. And, uh, being that, yeah, it'll be a tough game, but uh, let's just hope that we can bounce back, you know, bounce back in style, and hopefully we can come back home with three points. On bank holiday Monday, we should have been at home to Hereford FC, but of course our stadium wasn't in the greatest condition and so it got called off. So uh, we've got three games on hand right now. We'll be hoping to close the gap on uh, our arrivals very shortly. And uh, yeah, on Monday we should have been at home to Hereford, but got called off. We have a rather mixed head-to-head -head record with Geisley. This first video is way back in 2012 where we beat them 4 0 at home. I remember that day really well because it was a baking hot September afternoon. Uh, so I fun unfortunately um, I can't find any official highlights on the internet, but 
I have found two goals from a fan's uh, perspective, so here are the two goals from that game. Later on that season, we lost 2-1 away, but uh, again, unfortunately, can't find any highlights from that match. So, uh, we move on to 2014, where we drew one all at home to Geisley on a bank holiday Monday. So, here are the highlights from that match. Chester with the chance to go a goal up in this game. The referee is making this last a long time, making sure no guys, the players are in the box. John Rooney steps up, right-footed, puts it beyond Steve Drench. And Chester have got themselves into the lead. 18 yard box, not enough yellow shirts came forward. You feel the corner comes in, that's through the cross comes in, and it's surely it's been stamped home by Adam Boys. He sent the travelling Geisley fans into raptures. They haven't cleared it at all there of Chester, and they've paid the price. Geisley on level terms, 1 1. Persistence pays off, I guess. Uh, we were just cr criticising one. Later on in that season, we drew three all away. That was my first visit to Nevermore, and it was an entertaining game. Uh, late drama at the end, it was a thrilling uh, final ten minutes. I think there were like three or four goals scored in that time. So, um, it's a monsoon weather, really. One minute it was uh, sunny, one minute it was pouring down, one minute it was hailing. So, it was an eventful first visit to Geisley, and here are the goals from that eventful game.
the following season we beat them 2 0 at home, so here are the goals in that match. <laughs> Later on the 2016-17 to 17 season, we drew one all the way at Kaisley, so enough a draw. So here are the goals for that match, and also uh, I'm going to show you the goal I recorded on my phone. Unfortunately, it's like it's in the portrait version, but I uh, still managed to record it. The edge of the area, nodded down towards James Alabi, surrounded by two players. James Alabi <laughs> scores an absolute beauty. It looked... He was in amongst a crowd of players. It looked like an overhead kick. Yeah, he's just hooked it back. Completely unexpected from the Grizzly defence. Johnny Max did completely wrong-footed. It's into the back of the net. It's Geisley nil. Chester won. Yeah, it's just wonderful play from James Allard. But, you know, the defenders, there was three guys defenders around him. And, you know, to be fair, Geisley didn't do a great deal wrong defensively there. It's Alex Lynch. Yeah. Walton scores. Good low shot. shot down into the bottom right hand corner and the Lions are level from the penalty spot. Geisley won, Chester won. Good penalty from Simon Walton, low and firm into that bottom right hand corner. St Alex Lynch, the goalkeeper the wrong way and the Lions deservedly. Fall into the box. Last season we lost 2-0 at home to Geisley on Boxing Day and uh, here are the goals in that match, the less, uh, the less said about that game, the better. Takes a tumble and guys will get onto the ball. Jones with the trip and the shot from range from Roberts. Oh, it's an absolute screamer. But it's not Roberts, it's McFadzie and he's put it into the top corner. Did in. Marcel's heads it against Roberts and Roberts could be in for two. It's 2-0 two to the visitors. The man who spent time on loan at Chester two seasons ago, Robert. Finally, our uh, most recent game against Skysley was on New Year's Day. We drew one all the way, so yes, another draw on the road. And uh, here were the goals in that match. And I managed to recall Kingsley James's goal, so we'll show you that one too. <laughs> Geisley's recent form is rather consistent, so first of all they drew one all at home to AFC Telford United, then after that they drew one all away at Stockport County, then uh, they drew two all away at Leamington before winning 2-1 at home to Nuneaton Borough last Saturday, then on Bank Holiday Monday, so a few days ago, they drew one all away at Altrincham, so uh, the unbeaten in the last five games, so this is something we must look out for tomorrow afternoon. Our form isn't too great in pre-season and our final uh, friendly, we lost 4-2 uh, at home to Everton under 23s. 
Now, first league match of the season was at home again. This time it was to Spennymore Town where we drew 0-0. Uh, after that, we beat Curse National away 3-0 in our first away game of the season uh, before losing 8-1 away at Blythe Spartans. And uh, last Saturday, we lost 3-1 away at AFC Telford United. So, uh, there are things uh, to improve tomorrow. We must improve a lot. Hopefully, we will uh, come back home for a big win. Guys, the least key player is Alex Perth, who is a central midfielder. He's been at the club for quite, uh, for quite a while now. He's been there since 2014, where we signed from Leeds United. Uh, he had a few spells at Leeds in the under-23 side, but uh, couldn't quite materialise. So we signed for guys Lee permanent a few years ago. So uh, he's a key player for them. He's uh, a fan's favourite too, and he, he's a tough, uh, tough tackling player. Who, uh, he, he's also scored quite a few goals at the club. So um, you know he'll be a player to look out for tomorrow. If, you know for like. Uh, the likes of Scott Burton, he'll be up against him and Gary Stop fourth. So, uh, yeah, Alex Perth, he's a good player for guys. He's been in the club for quite a while and, uh, you know, that experience is key for him. So, uh, yeah, he'll be the key player tomorrow. Tomorrow's game won't be easy at all because guys, they'll be up for it, especially with uh, them having a few former Chester players in their side. So, it'll be a really tough game tomorrow, but we should be taking advantage of them because... You know, it's two away games now where we've performed disappointingly. So, we'll be taking a good following around 300, you know, making a good atmosphere. And we don't want to be coming home on the bus and uh, on the coach and stuff, uh, you know, just miserable uh, miserable again. So, we want to be happy. We want to put on a really good performance, you know, once uh, if we want to put in a really good performance. Because we want to be climbing up the table again. And uh, we don't want to be, you know, booing the players off again. Because it was embarrassing last week, the supporters having to go at our managers. We don't want that to be happening again. We want to be, you know, uh, we want the pos we want the positivity back at the club because, uh, yeah, so tomorrow's game will be tough and it won't be easy, but we will be hoping that we can bounce back straight away. Hopefully we will. So uh, I will be recording the game, so look out for my vlog, uh, you know, in due course. So I uh, hope you enjoyed today's video. Please leave a like and subscribe to my channel. Uh, my score prediction is a one or draw. I think it will be a tough match and, you know, I'll sit on the fence with this one and I'll take a draw. So, uh, if you want to uh, make a prediction, then please comment down below. And also, if you want to vote for the Chester FC Gold the month, uh, the voting is still open. And uh, don't forget, uh, the voting closes at um, midnight tonight. So, uh, if you haven't voted yet, please do so. You can either click on the link in my uh, in the video uh, from you know the description from the last video, or you can also. Uh, comment down below. So of course, uh, please leave a like, subscribe to my channel. Uh, come on, you blues!